Hey guys, this is Gary, and um, I want to run a little test here. I've set up a little scenario. Uh, I've been curious for a while uh, about how different focal lengths impact depth of field, not in terms of, of perceived distance front to back, compression, elongation, that kind of distortion that happens, but in the actual amount of, of blur. So what I mean is this, uh, I'm going to be shooting this scene with three different focal lengths, 200 mil, 50 mil, and 20 mil. I'm going to shoot each focal length with three different f-stop settings, f4, f11, f22. So what, what my hypothesis is, is that, for example, if I'm going to be shooting at uh, 200 millimeters at f4, 50 millimeters at f4, and 20 mil, 20 mil at f4, the amount of blur in each case will be exactly the same or damn close. The reason I'm hypothesizing that is because the actual distance front to back between these two objects remains exactly the same in all three cases. The fact that the lens is distort front to back is on the lens and I want to see how that actually affects the, the perceived size of the depth of field. And the best way to do that is to look at the background blur. So I'm going to be focusing on the front object and I'm going to be shooting in the following way. When I'm shooting at 200, this front object gets focused on and it will dominate the right side of the frame. The top of the head and the bottom of the head will be at the top and the bottom of the frame, hopefully. Okay, so I'll shoot that, as I said, with three different f-stops. Then when I go to 50, I got to move in because I want the top of the head and the bottom of the head also to be at the top and bottom of the frame. Okay, so that means I have to move in. At 20 mil, I'm going to have to move in even more, actually a lot more, and then same deal, right? Now in all three cases, what's going to change is the perceived distance of the back. At 200 mil, this is going to look really close. At 50 mil, farther away. At 20 mil, a lot farther away. All right, so that's the scenario. Uh, last thing, I'm shooting with flash. You know, I'm one flash to light the front, one flash to light the back. When I stop down my camera, I have to stop up my flashes in equal measure. So. If I'm going to go from f4 to f11, that's three stops down on my camera, I have to stop up my flashes by three stops. These are all manual. I always shoot everything manual. Um, all right, and then we'll look at the results in Lightroom, and, you know, it should be pretty easy to see uh, how the different focal lengths affect the background blur. All right, so here we go. Okay, here we are in Lightroom. Um, what you're looking at at the moment is the 20 millimeter at f4 and the 50 millimeter at f4. Okay, so you can see that at 20 millimeters there's a significant amount of distortion, especially front to back distortion. Look at how much farther away the rear object looks at 20 millimeters than at 50. But what I'm interested in is the amount of blur here as compared to here. So I'm going to zoom in to the chart and try and get that in the frame, something like that, and then I'll come over here and try and zoom in. Now, unfortunately, Lightroom uh, doesn't give me an exact zoom range for each one. These are, but they're close. So you can see that, you know, that's pretty similar. So basically at F4, the background blur looks pretty similar. So now let's compare the 50 to the 200 millimeter. Um, so let me zoom out a little bit here. That's a little too much. So something like that, and then something like that. Okay. So again, not an exact zoom match, but you know, these also look very similar. So, so far my hypothesis seems to be holding up. All right, but let's go back to F22. I'm sorry, f11 at 20 millimeters, and we'll zoom in to the chart, something like that. And then over here, we'll go to the 50 millimeter. So this is 20 millimeters at f11, this is 50 millimeters at f11. 
So I'll try and get these kind of close. It's going to be hard. Okay, again, now to me, these look very similar in terms of the amount of background blur. Granted, they're not exactly the same zoom level, but they're pretty close, and the blur looks pretty close. So now I'm going to switch to the 50 millimeter lens on the left side, and then on the right side, we'll go with the 200 millimeter lens. And again, all right, you know what? I screwed up with my focal length, but th again, these look very similar to me, right? So this is the 50 millimeter at f11. This is the 200 millimeter at 176 mil at f11. Very similar results. Lastly, let's go to the 20 millimeter at f22. That's the 20 millimeter at f22 on the left. And we'll do the... Um, 50 millimeter at f22 on the right, okay? And again, to my eyes, these are very similar. All right, and then lastly, let's look on the left side. We'll make this one the uh, 50 millimeter at f22, and the right side will be the 20 millimeter. And let me zoom in with the 50 to try and match the magnification. Okay, now to my eyes, these look pretty close, right? F22 at 50 millimeters, F22 at, well, 165. I was screwing up on my, but whatever. I see, I, I mean, I'm not, I, I never claimed that this was an exact scientific comparison. I'm just curious to see what's going on. And these look pretty similar to me. So here's what I'm going to conclude. I think that basically the depth of field in terms of blur doesn't change um, between focal lengths that much. Okay, actually, um, I found that kind of interesting. Um, so why is this important? I mean, well, I want to know the characteristics of my lenses. You know, so different focal lengths, I'm now pretty confident, don't actually change um, the depth of field at the same f-stop. At least they don't change it perceptibly. Um, so what that means is if I'm going to shoot at, say, 20 mil, I'm going to get an elongation of the scene, but I'm also getting an elongation of the depth of field. So if I shoot at 50 millimeters at f4, I'm going to get a certain amount of blur back here. If I shoot at 20 millimeters at f4, I'll get that same blur. It's just that this background object will look farther away. And conversely, if I'm going to shoot telephoto, if I'm going to shoot long, I'll compress the scene at f4 because I'm shooting long, but the amount of blur isn't going to increase from f4 at 200 millimeters from 50. The amount of blur will be the same. It'll look closer, definitely. So my conclusion is what changes is the perceived distance. What doesn't change is the depth of field in terms of blur. The depth of field does grow and shrink um, based on the focal length in terms of compression or elongation, but the amount of blur is exactly the same or very close to the same at the same f-stop at different focal lengths. So that's interesting. All right, whatever. This is Gary. See you next time.